Hello fellow Smashers, and welcome to Combating Bayonetta, a matchup analysis. The first move we're going to peek on is Heel Slide, Bayonetta's standard ground side B. Now her side B were well powerful in its own right because it's a great combo starter, in itself is very punishable on block. The second part of the Heel Slide, the back flip, can only be attained after the very end of the move and cannot be done at any point in time, which is something some people still believe. Next up is Bayonetta's Aerial Side B, her Afterburner Kick. In particular, we'll be discussing her Dive Kick. Now, her Dive Kick is a very strong option, very unique to the series. However, it definitely has its fair share of cooldown. If you spot dodge it on reaction, you can punish the landing lag. Also, you can just outright beat it with solid anti-air options. However, one of the best things to do is just use one of your forward aerials, or if you have a strong neutral aerial, to combat the dive kick, as the hitbox itself is going to be solely on her feet rather than the rest of her body, making it easily to intercept. Now let's talk about Bayonetta's Wicked Weaves, aka her smash attacks. Now even though they have great range, these moves, just like Olimar and Korin's, can actually be clanked with by aerial attacks, something that's fairly unique to the series. However, unlike Korin and Olimar, Bayonetta has quite a bit of cooldown on her smash attacks, allowing you to have interesting scenarios in which you can clank with her smash attacks and punish her on reaction. Now let's get into the bane of every smasher's existence, Witch Time. Witch Time is definitely the best counter in the game, but there are actions you can take to reliably punish it. The cooldown for Witch Time happens to be in frame 30 to frame 45, making it an ideal counter to actually react to and punish with a smash rather than a quick attack. While Bats Within can be annoying in certain situations, it's important to realize that it only gets her out of situations that aren't true combos. And in those scenarios, you still are able to tack on damage. And unlike other characters in the game, she cannot air dodge cancel from that scenario, which means you get guaranteed air dodge frame traps from her that already tack on damage and allow you to get another punish to continue the strength. Next up is Directional Influence aka DI. DI is super important against Bayonetta, and particularly utilizing quarter circle SDI or dual stick SDI is super important versus Bayonetta's witch twist. Place it in the upper left notch and bring it to the upper right notch back and forth repeatedly. If you're able to do it correctly, you can go the opposite way of where the move will normally hit you or just DI straight up out of the move. It is only available with the analog stick. In order to dual stick SDI or double stick SDI, you're gonna hold the analog in the up left notch while taking the C stick and mashing it in the up right notch. Going into the final tips that can help you combat Bayonetta, one thing is clear, you need to check her frame data. Simple glance at her frame data will make you realize that outside, which twists out of shield, down tilt, and up tilt, Bayonetta's moves are relatively slow. The majority of time, the character is going to be looking for a lot of whiff punishes, which means you can stay at a decent distance and reliably pressure her, or just wait for her to go and try to actively punish you. It's easily baitable, just due to the fact that the only option she can really rely on is spacing back airs, using down tilt, or using side B, which we have shown earlier on in the video quite punishable. Hope you enjoyed this first entry in this matchup analysis series. There'll definitely be some more in the future, as well as a DI video to help you, particularly with SDI, against some of the combo heavy characters in this game, such as Sheik, Ryu, and of course Bayonetta. Please be sure to like, follow, and subscribe, and talk to you guys next time.